Good evening, y'all, and welcome back to Bourbon and Bones. This is our ninth episode. Actually, this was our sixth episode. And then our seventh. And then our eighth. And so now our ninth. Anyways, if you like what you see here tonight, hit that like button below, subscribe to us, and tell us what you think about what we're doing. Tonight I'm going to talk about the price point hierarchy of bourbon. This will help you understand me better when I say top shelf and bottom shelf prices of bourbon. This does not always mean that a bottom shelf price is bad and a top shelf price is good. This is strictly to help broadly, very broadly, categorize bourbon within my show specifically. Also tonight, we're gonna to do our first blind tasting. And as we will do more of these as time goes on, I have four basic tiers. Bottom shelf bourbons sold at bottom shelf prices. So basically anything under about $30. Mid range, probably the largest tier, it's 30 to $75. Top tier is 75 to $140. And elite tier is 140 plus dollars. So allow me to reiterate. This does not mean that the quality of bourbon is set this way, just its literal price point. So all of that to say, let's try and find the best bottom shelf bourbon at my personal liquor store. Tonight we're going to take a tasting of the best 1.75 under $25 and here are tonight's contenders. Tonight we're going to be comparing Evan Williams Black Label at $17. Heaven Hill White Label at 18, Jim Beam White Label at 21, and Very Old Barton 86 Proof at $24. I have four points of basic criteria when selecting these bourbons. First of all, they had to be under $25. Second of all, they had to be from different distilleries, and they had to be of similar proofs. That's more for fairness sake, because a 100 proof bourbon compared to an 80 proof bourbon is going to be much deeper characteristic. And to keep them on a more even playing field, we wanted to keep them in a really similar category, under 90 proof. A lot of bourbons we've looked at in the past have been nice mid-range bourbons, sometimes daily, sometimes a little bit harder to find bottles, but always mid-range, never a bottom shelf. So this is pretty much our budget episode. Because sometimes you need just good enough for the week before payday. Or you need something that's pretty good to bring to a, a party or gathering once we finally get out of quarantine. Let's dig into the bourbon companies a bit tonight. Starting tonight's fight is Evan Williams Black Label. Coming in at $17 for a 1.75, 86 proof. This is Evan Williams' flagship bourbon, yes. It is owned by Heaven Hill, but it is a name only, really, being that it's made at separate distilleries. Evan Williams itself is a low rye mash bill and has blended average age about a seven year. Second up is Heaven Hill White Label. A quick side note, do not be afraid of plastic bottles. Plastic bottles does not mean bad. Sometimes it just means affordable. Anyways, Heaven Hill, White label, $18, 80 proof. This is the namesake of the juggernaut that is Heaven Hill, a blended age of about three years, whose master sellers come from the Jim Beam family, but they do not actually work for the Jim Beam product line. And a lot of you old fellows out there might remember that Heaven Hill white label used to be a gold label because it was the 80 proof, and the white label is actually their bottle and bond at eight years old. So after Heaven Hill discontinued the bottle and bond series back in 2018, and the absolute outrage online of bourbon drinkers brought it back from $15 to $40. And so we're all still a bit pissed about that, actually. Third up this evening is Jim Beam White Label, coming in at $21, 80 proof. Another blended age, averaging about four years old. So the Beam Company is another powerhouse of bourbon. Every master distiller is actually descended from Jim Beam, just like for Heaven Hill. A little bit of a different family though. So the master distiller and head of family was just after the Civil War and retired some 60 years later. 
Jim Beam is actually the very first bourbon company to reach far into the Asian European market. Finally tonight, very old Barton from the Barton 1972 distillery and is topping the scales off at $24, another 86 proof, averaging about a six year old. Very old Barton is made by Barton 1792 distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky, under the watchful eye of Sazerac, as we know from Buffalo Trace. If you want a little bit more history about them, Check out this link. This might be the least circulated bourbon on the list. It might be a little bit difficult to get in your area. Very Old Barton comes in three adoration. It's 80 proof, 86 proof, and 100 proof. It's their bottle and bond style. So before the show tonight, the girlfriend actually poured out two, two and a half ounces of each bourbon into a different glass for us and labeled A through D. So what I'm gonna do is sample them and then essentially just declare a winner. So now we're gonna start with A. So A initially you have a little bit of burst of ethanol and a little bit of nuttiness. Not much, I mean just a little bit of um, maybe cashew. and a little bit of caramel. On the palate, it's a little light, good, good caramel, a little bit of nuttiness. It's very nice, very pleasant. So, B. So I think you can get a little bit of fruit with it. I have a, a, cherry, a dark cherry note. Cherry on the palate, for sure. A little bit of smoke. And just very little bit, um, a little bit of caramel. It's, it's very nice. It's very subtle. I'm kind of curious how how a lot of these will evolve with a bit of water in them. So see. So initially, a bit of ethanol. All these are a little on the young side. You're gonna smell a little bit of that. Touch of oak. Cherry chapstick. I mean, just completely that waxy bold cheeriness, it just hangs on to the palate. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting for a bourbon. You really don't get a lot of um, paraffin-y kind of flavor profile with, with bourbons. And then finally D. You must get a cedar sweetness coming off of this. A little bit of mossiness, like a mossy kind of funk with it. Interesting. On the palate, it kind of dissipates a bit. It's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of a, of a praline, a little bit of um, some kind of sweetness on there. 
It's almost a salt taffy kind of quality to it. It has a little bit of a brine to it, but that kind of overly sweetness that it is attached to salt water taffy. And so now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna taste a bit, do a little bit of a ranking, and then uh, we're gonna come back and see where we're at. So right now we're ranked at C, D, B, and A. So we're gonna throw a little bit of water into each of them, kind of see how they evolve. I'm gonna take a quick little 10 minute break, kind of give my palate a rest, and we'll see where we're at at the end of that. Welcome back. So after about 10 minutes in YouTube world, we've uh, added a little bit of water to these, and so we're gonna do in our second tasting, starting with C. Even with a little bit of water, this one has this big, bold, cherry chapstickness that we talked about before. A little bit of caramel as well, but definitely just a bold cherry chapstick. On the palate, touch of pepper, cherry, Kind of ends with vanilla, kind of hangs on there a little bit, but it's a nice one. Current second place is D. This is a, almost a caramel candy, very light. A little bit of vanilla. Good buttery caramel, like a um, soft caramel. It's right on the palate, kind of lingers there for a little bit, not quite as long as C. Jump into B real fast. Third current place. Caramel, a little bit of nuttiness. Palette, it's very pecan -y. Very light pecan, a little bit of vanilla. Nice bit of peppery spice right on the tip of the tongue, right around the edge. Current fourth place. smell kind of soured grass like um like wet grass like right after you mow and then it rains real hard this is kind of wetness And on the palate, it's just a little bit of vanilla, a touch of caramel, and that's kind of about it. All right, so like last time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sample through, kind of see how water has changed them, re-rank them a bit, and, and see where we're at. All right, so after tasting it neat, tasting it with a bit of water, this is currently my ranking. And just to clarify real fast before the verdict tonight, this is my opinion. This is my palate. This is how I like bourbons to sit on, on my palate, for lack of a better word. Um, tell me what you think below in, in the descriptions, in the comments there. If you think I'm right, if you think I'm crazy, 
do it yourself, kind of see where you're at with it. So tonight we're going to start with A, our bottom spot. A is Heaven Hill White Label. All right, and third place right now is D. Evan Williams, Black Label. Second place, B. Jim Beam, White Label. So that only leaves C, which is Very Old Barton. Okay, so the winner tonight is Very Old Barton. 86 proof. Currently Bourbon and Bones best 1.75 under 25 we have tried here so far and tell me what you think below in the comments about my ranking, what you think, um, if you agree, if you disagree. I'm always excited to hear from from everyone. Also let me know if you think I should try put Very Old Barton up against something else, something else that's a 1.75 under 25 that hopefully I have access to. Like I said, this ranking will stay until we get uh, two, three more 1.75s to try them against. Tell me which ones you'd like to see. Tonight we've talked a lot about bottom shelf price bourbons. Of course our winner being Very Old Barton, but another little winner, another little bottom feeder, if you will, actually this little bony fish named Nightia. This little guy was discovered in the fossilized remains of a sandy lake bed. And if you look at the fossil in the picture up here, you actually can see where the sand was rippled from the water and fossilized that way. So this little guy died, dropped down in the bottom of the lake bed, covered up very quickly by sediment and became our little bony fish. So it died during the Eocene time period. So that was 50 to 40 million years ago. They typically grew three to five inches, um, but there have been some that actually been recorded up in excess of 10 inches. Now these are typically extremely, extremely rare finds. Now Nitea here slam, swam in large lakes that stretched from modern day Wyoming through Colorado into Utah. And they were following what is now the Green River. So it's part of the Green River Formation. Geologists are very good at making up names. The deposit there show distinctive colors, lighter and darker. So as you can see here, this is a deposit that's a lot lighter, showing it was actually part of the dry season. And darker colors actually show the period of wet season. This happens every single year. And the Green River Formation shows six million years worth of wet and dry seasons. Now on average, those wet and dry alternate, alternating seasons are about 0.18 millimeters thick. To give you an idea, that's actually about half the thickness of your thumbnail. The world at this point is actually quite recognizable. All the continents are pretty much where you would recognize them to be. Everything's a little more bowl shape, but not a whole lot. And here's an image of America during that time period to kind of give you an idea of what we were looking at. Nitea itself was a bottom shelf food source for the entire Eocene food chain. It was a major food source to larger fish, to birds, snakes, turtles, amphibians, and any other small animal that got close to a water's edge. Now, due to Nitea's abundance in the fossil record, it does suggest that these fish lived in large schools, much like herring do today. So this specimen is very, very well preserved. Even the small, delicate vertebrae along its spine are still actually well preserved in my specimen. Now this specimen here is four and a three quarter inch long from tip of jaw to the bottom of the tail, makes it a very, very average specimen. Here at Bourbon and Bones though, even average can be exciting. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight, for getting to meet Varial Barton and Nitea. If you like what we do here, like, share, and subscribe us below, and drop us a comment. Just remember, share a bourbon with someone. Good night.